And right here, we see that it actually loops through all of that memory, and, or all of the follow-on memory, and uh, it XORs it against D2. So as I said, this is a common technique for exploits for obfuscation, which is to XOR the entire shell code against some value so that you just obfuscate it enough that you could hide it from an IDS, perhaps. Uh, so here's using file insight, I XORed it against D2. And down here, we can see that this is obviously some sort of download and execute shell code because we see HTTP colon slash slash www.sra.com slash stage two. That file is not there for anybody that's about to go look for it. And to really cheaply and quickly re-weaponize this exploit for our own purposes, we can uh, take our handy dandy uh, hex editor and uh, just change that, sta that stage two to be uh, whatever we want to, uh, to put our executable for download. Sorry, I went, I went the wrong way. So rewriting this down here, we can, without doing any work, just drop an executable someplace and, and re repurpose this tool. So just to visualize what the concept looks like, uh, Internet Explorer uh, loads a page up, and that page has an ActiveX control with a malformed GIF and a heap spray. When that GIF is loaded in, it uh, takes control and you're owned. So as I said, retooling this exploit is pretty simple now. We just replace the shellcode in that, that JavaScript, that unescaped shellcode. We can change it to suit our purposes and put it back in there. Uh, in this case, you could just simply take that, as I said, and point it to me.com. I call that uh, refanging the exploit. This was an actual functioning exploit caught in the wild that uh, we didn't actually know about the MSVID CTL at the point that we found it. Uh, it took a couple of days for us to figure out what it was. At the same time, a bug release was put out and subsequently patched right before Black Hat last year. The exploit was easy to reverse um, and to identify some aspect of what was vulnerable. So from a network defense standpoint, at this, at this juncture, you could actually just go find that, uh, that DLL and prevent, uh, prevent that DLL from being accessed by the enterprise. You could um, perhaps prevent that ActiveX com object from being instantiated. Uh, you could create an IDS rule for that ActiveX component because that was a standard ActiveX component that's going to be uh, instantiated. You could restrict access to that DLL, as I said. Uh, IDS rule for the stage two host, if that's what you're interested in. You can put an IDS rule in for where it was getting the, the stage two download and also just an IDS rule for an MZ transfer, or executable transfer, which you should probably have in place anyway. Um, and the following, uh, fixing that arrow was pretty easy. Just replace the shell code and you could reuse it to suit your needs. Um, so functional broken arrow. So as I said, a functional broken arrow is one that actually works without breaking or stopping a debugger while running. It's a little bit harder to detect. Uh, and to analyze it, you actually need to break that exploit. Um, alter the return address, perhaps, if you can find like that 0C, 0C, 0C pointed someplace arbitrary, or replace the shell code with, uh, with 0XCC, or uh, with the debugger, we'll interpret as an interrupt three, which is a breakpoint. Uh, at that point, you'll actually, you can run the exploit, and when it gets to that shell code, it'll break, so you can work backwards from there. As far as uh, shell code replacement, So taking even just this initial couple of bytes of the shell code and replacing that, uh, which you probably can't see because it's too small, replacing that with CCs, uh, in this instance would get the uh, debugger to actually hit this in three, which it identifies as a breakpoint, and stop. And from there we can work through the shell code or work back to the bug. Find out, uh, look at the calling stack and see what called it. We could also modify the exploit so one issue with modifying the exploit code is that it uh, may be hard to work backwards. So sometimes if it jumps to that arbitrary memory location, you don't know where it jumped from, the call stack is broken or something like that. So as I said, another method might be to modify that return address. Um, there's no quick answer on what to change when you're dealing with a functional exploit that doesn't stop in a debugger because of an access violation. 
So it'll depend on the exploit and how it works. So that's where you kind of have to experiment a little bit, play around. That's where the being able to reload the snapshot in VM is pretty helpful. So in this case, you know, you could maybe take that memory location, that 0C, as I said, and change it to something else that you might control. And with a functional broken arrow, it's essentially the same technique once you actually break it and figure out where the, the issue is. And um, hobbling a memory address or shellcode to force the exploit to break or fail is definitely a useful technique. Mitigation or remediation uh, are the same with any exploit at that point. Uh, so identifying exploit is the hardest part. I think everybody probably figured that out at this point. The creative IDS rules and leveraging existing technology is definitely a helpful way to do it. Um, if anybody has any good ideas, I'd be happy to hear them. Two types of broken arrows, uh, stealthy functional and uh, noisy broken. Hopefully you'll find more noisy broken than you will stealthy functional because they're easier to deal with. And uh, stay safe when you're playing with these things. Try not to run in a lab system or pop yourself too bad. It happens to everybody though. So um, real quick for anybody that wants to start playing with this stuff on you know, the ride home. Uh, find an exploit, the offensive security exploit database or Metasploit, uh, build the exploit and then kind of look at it and reverse it from there. It's a little bit safer than finding something out in the wild. Uh, re reverse it using the techniques that you know, I talked about here and then keep doing it over and over again and eventually you'll, you'll get really good at figuring out where these exploits are and you know, maybe find a new bug. So with that, I'll leave it open to uh, questions if anybody has any and uh, if not, uh, thanks for coming. Okay. Thank you.